All right. So I asked this uh, quest lovely question on what if you're in a relationship and um, and you're praying for a solution and resolution and uh, and things aren't happening and there's impatience. So for me, with that type of scenario, then um, there's a few things to do. So the resolution, which I see now, there are before I go into that, you know, the prayer, what prayers would I use um, if I'm in a relationship to, to clear it and if I wanted guidance? Uh, so these are the prayers I would do. I would pray to God for a miracle to see the relationship in truth um, because my ego um, perceives it in a certain way or perceives that there's trouble or it's not going correctly in a certain way. So I'm really asking God for correction in my ego perception. So I, I pray to God for a miracle and to see this relationship in truth. So that's one I uh, do. In terms of guidance, um, I mean, I don't often do, uh, I don't know if I'm, I mean, I do uh, pray for guidance for my 12 step prayers, but on my Course in Miracles, I hand over the my perceptions, meaning like, um, uh, you know, I sort of see more the problem in a relationship is me rather than uh and is is my perception in a in a relationship and i see if i get my perception and my fear or whatever it is in me out of the way then guidance automatically comes and resolution automatically comes so um so i, I usually do it that way in clearing something so if i'm having conflict with a, a relationship what i will do is i will see how am i getting triggered what's coming up for me um you know like let's say i was in a relationship and um uh for example i'm in a relationship and i'm just hoping this person can leave and i don't have any guilt so i'm not burdened by them any longer then for me okay so if that was a hypothetical example if i'm in a relationship and i just want to leave but i feel responsible and i feel guilt if i was to leave and i want the other person to be in a good place and not feel abandoned, then I'd say, okay, so I'd see what's coming up. Well, what's coming up for me is um, I'd surrendered, I surrendered to God my guilt in letting this person go, you know, uh, into God's infinite light and love. I surrendered to God um, my need to save this person, which is my personal need, my ego need to be the savior for this person. I mean, infinite beings uh, subject only to what I hold in mind. I would, I would, I also see <clears throat> I'm, I'm a great, if you like, believer in um, karma and past lives so that people are like, uh, if you could say in A Course in Miracles level, spiritual assignments until the lesson is learnt. Or on a karmic level, I would say that, okay, you know, there may be in this lifetime or some previous lifetime, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I've seemingly inflicted harm on that person and they're back now for resolution. So I need to transcend the data, the karma, or the unforgiveness between myself and the person, whichever way you want to look at it. And then when that's resolved, um, the, that, uh, then, that, then usually, in my experience, when I've ever 100% resolved something or transcended something, so that I have no emotion around it, no negative emotion and no thoughts around it. It's like I'm just totally like uh, in a place of neutrality or just happiness or peace around it. <clears throat> There's always been the miraculous in my experience. It's only when I'm still holding on to some some limited perception in terms of emotions or uh, or thoughts or control around the situation, in which case I see life situations being stuck. So let's say, okay, so I'm having guilt, I need to surrender my guilt. And I, I sort of, from my own experience, when the guilt's gone, the thoughts are gone, always a miracle happens and guidance comes in. So I always see that the reason, and also the reason guidance isn't coming in uh, is because um, I still have ego emotions and thoughts which are blocking the uh, intuitive guidance for me. So it's like, okay, well, it will, when I clear myself as being a block to the channel of the information I need or the resolution of the miraculous, then it will automatically resolve. Um, so, and to the extent I'm still in fear or limiting thoughts, 
um, I may get the right solution, but it, I may, may go may create interference. Okay, what about impatience? You know, like I'm with someone and I'm praying for a resolution or guidance and it's taking forever. And again, well, again, you know, I could, I could um, uh, pray to God for a miracle to see my impatience in truth. Uh, impatience, I mean, what am I impatient about? Well, I want, I want this person gone, for example. Well, uh, I surrender to God my uh, impatience at wanting this relationship to be resolved now uh, and pray for a miracle and surrender this into God's infinite light. You know, so those would be the things I'd be working on. So the thing that I work on, a relationship for me exists on a personal level um, only while my person is being triggered by the other person. Otherwise, if I walk, let's take the thing of meaningless. If I walk down a street and whatever these strangers are doing, you know, I don't track that data. In the next minute, I'll be present because they're all meaningless to me. So if I'm in a personal relationship, it's because my ego finds the other person special or in a positive or negative way. So there, either there is an attraction because this person is, you know, um, super special in a positive way, or they're horrible because they're super special in a horrible way. But those are the dualities. And for me, usually life is giving me the dualistic relationships because I haven't transcended them. When even for, if I render a relationship meaningless, then it will not register on a personal level. The relationship will be divine. I hope that makes uh, sense. So I see that my thinking that there's a me having a special relationship with you is the problem of not having a divine relationship in oneness and, and letting the divine just orchestrate things. So that's the block. Um, the thing is though, I do think, I do sort of see people as, you know, if I'm having problems with people, there's a karmic assignment. Um, you know, I mean, we, they also say this in 12 step groups. I think it's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, if you have a problem with an individual and you just leave them, often the universe will give you a similar situation again. It's like, well, you're not going to get away from the lesson you need to learn. So <clears throat> here's some, here's another situation that we I mean, I'll give you an example from my case, you know, I had a lot of problems with the builders and traders. And no matter how hard I seem to be trying to be clever in getting another good builder, trader or plumber, you know, there was another problem and my ego would get enraged. So it was like, you know, to my ego, it was like, well, you're going to find the perfect plumber next time. <laughs> but I hadn't, I hadn't sorted out my lessons with the, with my unforgiveness of the previous plumbers and builders. Um, so same thing with romantic relationships. I often think um, it is a bit like that. There's a, like a promotion. Once you transcend a relationship, the next relationship is usually promoted in some way in which you've done the work, even though that's quite dualistic. Um, on a 12 step level, you know, um, like I had my father, I lived with my 87 year old father who's Alzheimer's. Um, for me in that situation, it's like, well, you know, uh, until I'm happy, joyous and free and in the infinite all the time, He's otherwise he's giving me data, in which case I have to transcend it. My experience is, you know, for the love, it's also an opportunity you can reframe it or recontextualize the problem. Um, if you, if you, um, by transcending your own stuff, it, it's it, it's actually giving. Say, if I'm a romantic relationship, and I can't I can't seem to let them go, then transcend all the data, transcend any unforgiveness, any impatience any resentments, any fears, any um, whatever is coming up. And usually what will happen is the, the other person is going to benefit so much from all that spiritual work, because in truth, there is no separation. So as, when you allow the light in by letting one's own limitations and fear go, then that light, if you like, immerses both parties. I mean, Hawkins had a lovely story. He walked in, I'll just remind, the, the problem is not the world, the problem is that I'm, I'm getting in the way of the light and the love, that's the problem. So he walked, his famous story from Hawkins, he walked into a cabin, you know, he was wandering out in the desert, walked into a cabin and there was a rattlesnake 
in the cabin. So the first thoughts he had were ego. Maybe I should try and hit it or defend myself. But then he, he intuitively knew that he just has to get out of his fear and his thoughts and go into an infinite experience of love or an enlightened experience. And that love would then radiate out into the room. And he was able to do that as, um, as he was very advanced, shall we say. And, um, and, then, and the snake just stood there transfixed in this love. You know, even though the nature of a snake is probably just, okay, human just walks into its domain, probably is to bite it. But, you know, Hawkins' thoughts were out of the picture and the love that radiated through was so intense and palpable that the snake's usual domain was like totally like obliterated with love and the presence of love. And so it was just there, you know, and eventually there was a knowingness he could leave because the, the snake, even a snake whose nature is to just bite everything probably, I'm probably being very judgmental at snakes, but in the presence of extreme love, its nature is transformed. So that would probably go, I'm pretty sure go for my father and romantic relationships. So um, anyway, I'll stop there. I think I've talked for a while.